Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tea with the Team. So we decided to name the um, our our call Tea with the Team because, you know, everybody wants to know what the tea is, right? <laughs> So we are going to get started today. We've got about an hour to chat, ask some questions and, and stuff like that. But I wanted to get started on um, just a few things that are going on in the marketplace and also on the group. Um, a couple of things that are um, wanted to mention were um, everybody keeps asking about the business verifications. This is something we kind of touched on a little bit last week. If you haven't gotten it, they expect it. You're going to you're going to have to fill it out. It just is what it is. Um, and then, for those of you that are new or have not filled out the 1099 information, you will get a 1099. You will get 1099 information. You do have to put your social security number in. These are all standard things that you have to put on all platforms. And Facebook isn't any different for that. So once you get to that 599 threshold, you do have to put that in. Uh, so just keep that in mind. One exciting thing that we will be having coming up the last three weekends in January, we're going to do a three part webinar with three different topics. I'm going to have a day, Marcus is ha has a day, and Sean will have a day, or I should say we're doing one each week. Each one of us will have a topic. And the topics are all about transitioning to shops and moving to shops. Um, Sean will have um, shops with Sean. Uh, Marcus is going to have um, transitioning to shops and what does it take. And I'm going to have um, basically what it takes to promote yourself on Marketplace, uh, just as a regular Marketplace salesperson and not in sh into shops. So I'll be the first one and then Marcus and then Sean as we transition up for those who want to uh, really understand shops. It will be a paid webinar. It'll be a nominal fee. We'll uh, get that introduced to some more next week, but just kind of keep that in mind. It's going to be really good, meaty, meaty information. So uh, Marcus has a tech tip for us today. Do you want to go ahead and, and get started with that, Marcus? Sure. Yeah play around with another feature here that we haven't done yet. So um, we've kind of talked about it. I think we did a um, little, or it's either been a video, Lisa, you can probably remind me if it's been a video or not, um, doing marketplace research. So using uh, marketplace as a research tool. Um, there's a couple features that aren't obvious in there to uh, be able to get in and see what's sold and, and things like that. So. Um, I'm going to share my screen here we'll, and we'll see how it goes. So at least if you could tell me if uh, we're going to do just the window and I want to do this window. And for those of you on the phone, um, we do have it being recorded. Yes, we'll record it and we will be posting it on the YouTube channel and then we will also post it in the group for those of you who are following the YouTube channel or will be looking for it on the group. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I know a couple of folks are just on the phone and you might not be able to see what we're doing. So you can always go uh, go back and watch it again and, and see what I'm doing on the screen. Lisa, can you see my screen okay? Yep, everything looks good. It would be very Christmassy. Yes, Merry Christmas. Yeah. So one of the things that's important is to know, you know, obviously where if you have an item, whatever you might be selling, where it stands on Marketplace and what's selling on Marketplace, what's like it, is there, you know, are there others, are there comps, um, are there things like that? And often we go to eBay because it's really easy to look at eBay and look at your comps um, on eBay, but, uh, whew, you know, that person needs some tornado help. Um, but we're we're not selling on eBay, so that's a great that's a great tool. But we're selling on Marketplace, and so there is some features. It's not as refined as eBay, but nor is Marketplace hasn't been around as long as eBay has either. So uh, I think the first place that often that hung me up was it has to start with a search term. So you have to have a search term to start with. So if you go to you know this is your standard Marketplace, however you get there, um, uh, vintage. Christmas, right? So we're still 
people are still looking at Christmas stuff. My wife and I just yesterday sold a whole bunch of Christmas stuff. Even though Christmas is almost over, their stuff is still unpacked. And so you can still get it out there and get it sold and they can get it to you before they pack up their stuff. So I just searched for vintage Christmas. I happen to be searching in this Bell, Bell Air, Michigan. You can obviously change that to whatever you want. I like to widen the radius. And then here's all the different options that you have. I like to go down and open them all up one by one so that I know what I'm working with. I like to set it to shipping. Obviously it's whatever works for you and what you're doing. I like to look at only uh, vintage wouldn't work for new only, but you could, uh, so keep it at everything. And then down here at the bottom is where you can find out what's been selling. So uh, we're gonna look at everything in the last 30 days. Uh, so we're gonna select all and then sold. So obviously you can get very specific with this. If you have a very specific thing that you're looking for, uh, you can um, narrow it down with your search terms and we won't get all into that. Actually, let's change it to the last 24 hours. So these are things that were listed in the last 24 hours and sold. So listed a day within the, the last day and sold with shipping, right? Uh, gives you the price. Uh, what I like to do is I like to start opening up a bunch of windows. Uh, if you're on uh, Windows, a real easy way to do that is uh, Control. So you press Control, and I mean a bunch of tabs. Excuse me, a bunch of tabs. So I want to start looking at these because we know that this isn't the total price, right? This is just the listing price. You could obviously have a uh, hundred dollars shipping charge or whatever it might, you know. So you want to get in there and take a look at it. So I've opened up a whole bunch of these right now, depending on what your internet can handle. Uh, you can start going through and looking at perhaps might not be able to handle it doing the, uh, oh, here's one come up. So this one ships for 575. Uh, you can see what kind of they, they uh, wrote about it. Uh, the, the windows or the images aren't loading right away. Uh, another thing, this is good for, uh, especially those of us that do drop shipping, you want to know what your competitors are selling. So this quickly gets you to your competitors uh, and you can look to see what, what they're doing as well. So you can scroll down, see what other stuff they've sold, you know, just kind of get a, get a glance at what that person is, is looking at. You can follow if you want to. I don't think my internet's going to be able to handle doing video and a bunch of these all at the same time, but uh, this one ships for nine, nine bucks. So then you can get kind of your, your idea of what you're looking at. It's a, I like it. I use it a lot. It's a really cool feature that I didn't know was there for a long time. I would stumble upon it every once in a while, but uh, uh, I didn't use it specifically uh, and, and with purpose. And it's, I've really gotten a lot of insight into what I sell and my competitors. Uh, Lisa, that, that's really about it. Uh, I could open it up to questions. If anybody has questions specific to this, or we can save that to the end. Or if Lisa, if you had anything else to, to add to that. Just That's all I it. had as far as the announcements go, but if anybody has any questions about, about how to um, do any of this research, uh, go ahead and raise your hand. Now, if you do have a question, use the hand button and, uh, and it will tell us that you have a question or uh, a comment on it. And we're happy to, to address that. If not, then we will move on to our regular Q and A. And, and those of you that have called in, feel free to just unmute and uh, speak up. And you may not be able to unmute. I'm going to unmute everybody for a second. Should we go back to the regular screen? Sure. Yeah. Let me stop. Yeah. All right, everybody. So moving forward, we're at the end of the year uh, for Christmas. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments, you want to raise your hand um, on the um, on the the app, then go ahead so that we can we can do that. I know it's at the end of the year, the beginning of the year, we start uh, getting ready, making goals uh, and doing all that. We will 
have a brand new website that we plan on putting all of our frequently asked questions that you guys keep asking about uh, on there. We're going to have a lot of different features on the website that you guys can look forward to and also use as another reference guide for yourselves. And so that is in the process of being made right now. Of course, we do have the, um, uh, the email sign up and we have quite a few of you guys who did sign up on email. Go ahead, Marcus. Yeah, uh, so that was an announcement too today. I just finished it right in the nick of time is somebody, Marilyn, was that you that asked about the doing the census or doing the survey? No, okay. Uh, yeah, somebody on had a very good good question, and we had talked about it before, but it just kind of sparked it again. Uh, was doing a survey of the group to see see what the makeup of the group is, right? Uh, obviously, everybody sells on marketplace, but um, we're a mix of resellers selling your own product that you make, um, all all sorts of different types of sellers, and at different levels, just starting, uh, trying to transition to from part-time or no time to full-time or whatever. So we're going to send out a, a, a survey here at the end of our call and uh, we will um, post that in the group and we'd love if everybody could join. Um, we're not join. If everybody could take it, it's real quick. It's like less than 10 questions, I think. So, uh, so it'll be interesting to see what the makeup of the group is. Right. Um, and you don't have to put your personal information nope. in there. Nope, not at all. Uh, most of it is. Bottom, most of you can put your name on there if you want, but if you don't, then that's fine too. But it's just, you know, an mm -hmm. understanding of exactly, you know, where everybody's at. Uh, do you sell in shops? Do you not sell in shops? You know, what kind of items do you sell? How much are you selling a year? You know, just kind of stuff like that so that we can we can know exactly where we can help you guys and, and be able to, you know, move forward with all of that stuff. And another thing on the um, frequently asked questions, we have the the draft version or the under construction version is already listed. So um, you guys that are on here are very engaged in the group. We understand that you guys, I, we see your names all the time. Um, by all means, if you see somebody that, that comes on and has a question that we've answered 5,000 times, which that's what we do, you know, that, that's the part. Direct them to the, direct them to the website. Uh, we, we have those uh, frequently asked questions uh, I think the top five are already listed um, based on a poll I did a while back and we're going to be adding to that as, as time goes on. So um, by all means, direct somebody, you know, it, it doesn't have to be us that, that drops that link, that link. Uh, we do control links, how often links are posted to, to try to keep uh, spam down. But uh, that link obviously is, is free game to our website and uh, post it out there so they can get the info that they need faster then, you know, waiting for, for somebody to either restate it or uh, point, point them in that direction. That's all I got. Um, there's a couple of things that I noticed that people have been asking a lot. One of the questions is, um, what's the difference between having a shop and having a personal marketplace? And just so you know, when we do the uh, the webinar, the, the three part webinar at the end of January, that's going to answer that in a very broad um, way down to the details. And every each one of us is going to have a specific day that really explains the differences between having a regular marketplace and having a shop. Now, you know, everybody has their opinion as to whether or not having a shop is better than having a regular marketplace. And I think that that webinar will actually give you a really good idea of what's best for you and how to move forward with your business. Um, because at the end of the day, we're all in business for, for ourselves. We're all, you know, individual contractors that are online selling our products and doing everything we can to do the best that we can. And the purpose of our group is to, to help raise you guys to a different level and help you out uh, to be more successful where you're at and everybody's at a different at a different stage in their business. One of the things that we're going to also be putting out is when to uh, list things. So, for example, in January, you need to be starting to list Valentine's items uh, because everything has a, a market time. That, that you sell. Now, some people sell things that are year round and that's fine, but there's others that, that sell, you know, Christmas or um, just, you know, different holidays or even 
super seasonal things. And so that's something that we'll also be putting on the website for next year is a calendar of when to expect to sell certain things. So I'm just gonna give, you, give it to you right now and say in January, start getting ready for Valentine's Day. Start putting everything up right then because then at the end of February, you're gonna declare and sit all out. Get it, get it all gone and get it ready for what? St. Patrick's Day, you know, that kind of stuff. So uh, there's a season for everything and that's we're gonna try and get that ready for you guys so that you know exactly when to when to be uh, marketing these things. All right, cool. Want to uh, put it up? I know we're getting ready to have uh, the holidays here and there's a lot of people that that aren't uh, here because they're they've already taken off. I know our assistant's already taken off for Christmas and um, she's she's off and that leaves me and Marcus <laughs> with the ball in our lap having to do with the rest of her work. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's she's having a baby. Her. Yes, she's having a baby, a Christmas baby. I had my birthday last week and we, I spent it in Vegas with my kids. So I know what it's like to be a Christmas baby. So does my son. <laughs> Because we did it together. <laughs> anyway. Oh, good. Sean's here. Talk to us, Sean. I was just going to address the, just kind of touch the surface on difference between marketplace and doing a shop. Perfect. Thank you. If you just want to sell things online, if you just want to sell things online and you're comfortable with that, marketplace is where you need to be. If you actually want to do a scalable business and be more of an e-commerce retailer, shops is the path uh, combined with a website. Marketplace is great for making money, don't get me wrong, and you can sell a lot of things on Marketplace, but you're very limited as to what you can do. Um, like this week, I've been, I don't have a whole lot to add this week because I've been steady working on coding a Shopify collection page that will contain all of the Facebook attributes, tags, and everything, which you can't do on Marketplace. It, it, it doesn't feed in the same, but you can make a feed that will feed into a shop that will have all the attribute tagging and everything that you need for your listings to rank. So, there are certain things you can do with shop listings that you cannot do with marketplace listings. And marketplace has a ceiling to where shops really don't. If you did nothing more than to use Facebook and the shops, they give you all the tools that you need to basically have an e-commerce business. The, as you know, Lisa, we talk a lot the tools that I've shown you that are hidden in the background are incredible. Uh, it's really endless what you can do with the shops platform. Uh, right. I get more tools from Facebook than I do from my, from Shopify or any of the other sites that I use, but that's all I had to add. That's perfect. Does anybody have any uh, questions about what he said? Um, I have a question for you, Lisa, because I am considering um, doing reselling as well to add to uh, part of what I do for my day job is I drive around a lot. I, I'm out and about throughout town and I'm pretty flexible. Uh, so I get to go in and out of uh, thrift stores and stuff. What's, uh, what is one, how, how can I get started? Like, where would I, what's the, what's a good resource to get started to, to, you know, what, what sells well, what to buy. I know that's a big question for a, but uh, I want to utilize my, the skills that I've got on Marketplace so far to uh, kind of branch out a little bit. So as far as selling goes, uh, if you're going into thrift stores or even things like Burlington Coat Factory or any of those other places and, and to be able to purchase items, you just kind of want to keep your app and with what you were showing us earlier 
uh, look it up and see exactly, you know, who has what for sale and how much it's selling for and see if there's a profit in there for you when you purchase the item. There's certain things that as you're, you're going around and you're buying, you know that it's always going to be a winner no matter what. Uh, I think, and it, in my experience, things that aren't flooded in the market sell really well. So, for example, I have a video on uh, Jim Shore collectibles. Anytime I buy Jim Shore collectibles and I buy them on Marketplace, I buy them at thrift stores, I buy them wherever, they always sell no matter what, no matter what the season is because it's a collectible and it's not something that's flooded in the market. And so it's really easy for me when I, when I buy Jim Shore collectible figurines, they always sell. So you'll see when you're in the thrift stores, uh, people with their phones in their hand and they're looking things up. They can do it the way you were showing us or that you can look it up on eBay or, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. But, but that's kind of how I would start. And uh, if you're going to do it that way, but otherwise you can also start clearancing out your closets, uh, you know, finding things that you're not using, like your Christmas ornaments that you were talking about a little bit earlier. Cool. Sandra, Sandra had a question. She had her hand raised. Sandra, are you available to talk? I don't know if it was a mistake or not. Oops, keep going on and off mute. There we go. We got a couple. Okay, Natasha, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Natasha, there you are. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, yes. yes. I may have asked this last week. I hope I did. But um, on my shop, you know, like you have the three different things that you have the checklist before it says publish shop. So that third thing isn't checked off, but I think my, sh I mean, my shop is definitely published because people keep shopping. <laughs> I mean, I've been making sales, but it looks like that that third check mark isn't checked off. So I don't. What is what color is it? What color is what the? The check uh, is white. It's white. The third one. The first two are green, and I can't remember what the third check mark is. And then that that published shop thing over to the right. Um, I have clicked it in the past, and it says it'll be reviewed. Um, but like I said, I mean, people are definitely shopping. So I don't do know. Have you looked at your um I'm look your I'm uh, look, looking right now to see what that third button is. Okay. Yeah. And what you know, ahead, Marcus. That up, um you can look to see how folks are finding how folks are visiting. So on one of your insight tabs, um I, I don't remember exactly which one I'll look here in a minute, or maybe Sean can look at the same time. Um you can see where they're coming from. Are they coming from marketplace? Are they coming from your page? Are they going directly to your shop? And you can set that, you know, the, the calendar to show the time frame, And uh, so you kind of get a sense of where your visitors um, are coming. Yeah. And it did tell me that. It tells me that like 2000 or from Facebook, some are off of Facebook or some of them are followers on the insights. When I, when I look at it from my computer, especially when I look at it from the computer instead of the phone, it gets very specific. Yes. Yeah. May just okay. joined and it was May that asked for the census if, survey. If I'm not mistaken, <laughs> Natasha, that third, that third button, I, I can't access it because once you've set your shop up and you clear all three of those, they disappear. But if I remember correctly, that third one has something to do with either checkout or payouts. I'm not positive of which one you saying that uh, people can still shop and everything that is true. You can actually have a shop that if you have followers, uh, if people share things, uh, you'll get purchases off of Facebook and everything. You'll just see that they really don't come from, from marketplace, but I've, I've had shops that weren't even, that like you say weren't 100 percent complete that uh they were picking up traffic from followers or from facebook but just um whatever that is it's not turned on go to next time you're in your commerce manager on a desktop go to shops 
and then just look and see if the little pop-up window, if it says anything like there's unpublished changes, if there's any issues, okay. you should see two green lights. One, one says okay. F and one says no issues. If there's something that you need to click okay. publish on, it'll, it'll say uh, item or there's something that needs to be published and just click edit shop publish and that'll okay. clear it out all right thank you sean are you able to see the screen uh the screen share or are you just on your phone right now no i can see the screen so is this the screen you're referring to Yes, uh, right there where it says sales channel, where it says last updated. If your shop's needing anything published above that date, it will say changes. Or there's unpublished changes. It'll say it in blue. Then you need to click edit shop. Go And then when that window opens, uh, you just go down and hit the publish button. Yeah, and then lower right-hand corner when this page publish updates, lower right-hand corner. What I do just as kind of a safety measure, I always click save and then publish updates just in case something. While we're here, um, always go ahead and check too on your settings, upper left-hand corner. Uh, just check your visibility while you're there and just make sure that you're you just click there and click visibility and then you see that you're visible and everything um then i just click save and publish updates and now here's something to whenever you hit publish updates sometimes a little box will open up and it'll have two choices on how you want to publish always choose the one see yours went automatically because you didn't make any changes Always choose the one that has green next to it. And the reason being is if there's one little flaw, it'll go ahead and publish your shop and it'll tell you what the flaw is you need to fix. If you click the box that's next to the black uh, little uh, mark, if there's one little flaw, it won't publish anything about your shop. Uh, so always choose the green if you're given the option it tells you um, publish what is okay to publish and then let you know about issues that's what you always want to do or you'll publish and you'll think your shop's live and it's not it's just sitting there all right thanks John. thank you for both of you Another good, another good deep, deep answer for us. Did somebody else have their hands hand raised? One person. Feel uh, free to just unmute too and speak up. I know some some folks on the phone that might be, don't have the ability to raise their hand, so uh, there's not so many of us that you can't just uh, unmute and and uh, holler. One of the videos that we have for putting a shop on vacation mode, some of the people have mentioned that it doesn't fully put it on vacation mode. What it does is it takes it out of the um, marketplace feed when you're doing that. Uh, because when you have followers and things like that on your, uh, on your page, those people can still purchase from you. So even if you were never approved for marketplace, you can still sell on that shop because uh, because it's your own business's platform. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, uh, Sean. The way that I today. that I recommend people to put their shop on vacation mode, it's a couple of extra. It's just a couple of extra clicks. Where we were just at on the shop check and visibility. If you'll go to that point and go to visibility, and turn it off, your shop is no longer visible. It's not visible to followers. It's not visible to anyone. It, and it even, uh, okay. if I'm not mistaken, it even removes the shop tab from your page. Um, that's the true way of, of turning it off. It's the equivalent to unpublishing a page. So you have, uh, you, um, 
you can you can turn it off you can turn it to where you can uh, uh, work on it you can do it from there I actually go to shops go to visit settings visibility and just turn it completely off so I don't have any stragglers I just know for Perfect. sure that, that that works that's great there you go you got it from the professional himself I know that he says he doesn't know everything but I kind of think he knows most everything <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions? I know it's right next to the holidays, and so uh, everybody's got other things going on. Go ahead, hey, May. I, I have a, a, maybe it's not even a real question. I just wanted to clarify why I asked or thought maybe we should find out what the background of everyone is, is mm -hmm. What applies to one type of seller, like a drop seller, doesn't apply. And I noticed some people didn't even know what a drop seller was. Yeah. So <laughs> what applies to one person, like I'm a vintage reseller. So I'll learn something from drop sellers, but, you know, I'm not a drop seller. And then some of the people are the crafters. So like my friend I invited to the group, Shana she is a crap she's just getting started with this and she's never really done a whole lot of sales before online this is a new forum to her but she's a crafter and i'm more and i'm a resell a vintage reseller but i all i crafts for my therapy it's cheaper than a psychiatrist um so <laughs> i thought maybe it would well it is lisa <laughs> it is um <laughs> They're That's thirty dollars an hour. Sometimes with crafting, I can make thirty dollars. Um, yeah. So, well, actually, that's just my copay. But so, I just thought it would be nice to see what the demographics of the group were and the backgrounds were, so we would know. Just for info, for no other particular reason, maybe than being nosy. I think that's awesome. And one of the things that um, uh, we decided as an admin team was that it was important. And so Marcus went ahead and, and did a formal survey and he posted that just before the meeting was up. Oh, OK. So yeah, I haven't. It, yeah, I haven't really looked on anything like you just mentioned coming this close to the holidays. For those that don't know, yeah. one of uh, not only we all have lives and other things that we do, we like to think. <laughs> you know, the post the post office and the UPS store are our best friends. They're on our Christmas <laughs> card list. Um, is I do um, prison reform advocacy. So this is actually a busy week for me because I have different um, bunches or groups or, uh, or boxes of jail treat bags that go out around different places in Montana to different jails that allow me to send in treat bags for, for offenders that are incarcerated on the holidays. So no matter how well you plan for those, there are always little glitches that come up. So my time online hasn't been a whole lot. And then I'm not really a practicing Jehovah Witness, so I look forward to Christmas because it's like gives me a really good excuse to say, "Ah, it's Christmas." I get <laughs> quiet. <laughs> well, we, we think that it's important that we all know exactly where everybody's at. Also, our group is uh, all encompassing, so it, it holds a lot of different types of sellers on here. And at the end of the day, as a sale, as a sale, as a sale but there's different ways to approach things. And so like we've partnered with uh, Sean's group, which is Shop Talk, that specifically mm -hmm. only talks about shops, period, yeah. and the story that gives people an, an, an avenue to be able to go go to. And um, we are talking about adding more partner groups and and doing that um, so that, but we need to know well, that, exactly where everybody is. Yeah, a really that's, a great, that's that. a great idea. And then, Sometimes I, I try to use the post office. I'm a small town on the lake that swells the 100,000 people in the summer and very little in the winter. But I typically use the post office because it's closer to me than, and I'm from Washington, D.C. So the idea of, you know, I used to try to go to work with a couple of million people to one small piece of real estate. 
But God forbid I have to travel, you know, a little further across the bridge, all of two, all of a minute and a half, you know, to go to the UPS store. Cause that's like, you know, the next country. Um, but I had the larger stuff has to go UPS ground. And I dropped off some stuff day before yesterday to UPS. What I noticed or, and noticing it from the post office as well, but not as much, not as bad. When you hit the info, It'll just tell you it's in route. Didn't they used to tell you every time it hit a milestone? They don't. They're, you know, uh, they're doing that. I know my yeah, I don't was created, know. and I know it was accepted. After that, it, it told me when it got to Billings or Helena because there were two boxes went two different places. That was the next jump point. But then I didn't even sure. see a scan. One is out for delivery because it only went one state over. I didn't even see an in scan for the facility in North Dakota. All I saw is out for delivery. So right. that is really something that is, you know, if you've got a customer who is like, where's my box? They're going to look at that tracking and they're going to assume you screwed it up because they can't point their finger at anyone else. So I be aware of that because I don't see that getting any better, Lisa. Yeah. So I just go on their website and put the tracking number in, but I don't, I mean, all we can do is just educate our customers the best that we can. Um, Alex, do you have a question or comments? Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. I wanted to validate May's statement about the survey. You know, when you're talking about um, building a uh, culture, it, it really includes, um, just learning the social behavior and the norms of the people that you're serving in this business environment. And I wanted to, Agreed. again, validate May and her bringing up the, the survey. Uh, you know, each of us have our own natural biases, depending on if we're vintage reseller or wholesale drop shipper or, shipper or retail drop shipper, uh, et cetera. And I think all that is to be considered and respected when we're looking at from a leadership perspective, what types of programs, what types of things we say, even looking at the comments, um, maybe a parent, a, a, a mom of two who invites people who buy from them to go on their porch might be a little bit different from someone like me who's doing shipping only. I've read several comments where uh, people have expressed concern about the ups and downs of people coming to their porch and uh, no shows and man, my stomach twists a little bit. And then I said, uh-oh, don't bring your bias of shipping only into the situation. Try to put yourself in, uh, in that uh, shipper's shoes to really understand and to empathize with what they're going through. And then from there, at least in my opinion, I could come up with what ways could I give input to uh, up-level that person, maybe to decrease their stress or maybe to increase, you know, how can they get people to show up more to pick up their items? Because in my mind, where I come from, from the inner city, people come into your, knocking on your door, come into your area, that's like a suspicious one-on-one. -on -one. Whereas when I used to live in the suburbs, when, especially when I was a child, uh, just to give some context, man, your door was unlocked, you knew your neighbors, it was a, a different time. So how interesting when it comes to the diversity of the people, um, how, you know, you could bring in your biases in, in an innocent way that might affect some of your answers. And maybe that might give a clue to sometimes how we see such uh, contrast answers to some of the problems that get um, brought up uh, in the group. So anyway, I said all that to validate May's statement. I agree with you. And I'm, May is always very active on the platform and I appreciate everything that you do, May. When, uh, I will say though that as far as following up with what you said about the the shipping and and how to do with all that is it's just communicating with our customers the best that we can and even just letting them know uh, I know we talked a little bit um, a, a, you had talked a little bit about in your uh, Dorito video you and Marcus about 
putting um, statements together. And that might be a, a good um, option for you, May, when you, if you have customers that are, are starting to squawk about not being able to see the tracking, to be able to say, just keep in mind and have that just blank statement that you save in a little file that you just copy and paste over so that you don't have to type it all in every time. Because all of these things, even though they may seem, seem little, are important. Um, Sean, did you have something you wanted to add? I, 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 I'm sorry, Lisa. I don't mean to bother you. I've got to run real quick. I'm going to watch this no in the video. Hey, everybody that's you on bet. here, you guys have a great holiday. Thank you, May. Merry you Christmas. Oh, okay, and go I, ahead. And I know that, and I know that I'm active because I've got a big mouth. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Sean. <laughs> no, I, I I agree with May and and what Alex was was uh, was pointing out. Um, I, I'll tell you just kind of an analogy how I see Facebook sales and sellers in general. It's you know it's kind of like apples. There's there's all different colors of apples and they have different flavors and everything. However, at the core, they're all the same. So whereas we may be different types of apples, the tree that we're on is the Facebook platform. So we have this common bond of the same tree, even though we may be different types of apples. So after you get past the, the surface of what items we sell and what the manner in which we ship them or don't ship them or how we enter in our items, you know, whether we use a feed or not. After those three levels, we're, we're the same uh, because that's when we actually hit the branches of the tree and we're part of a community. We're all part of this thing. We, you know, all of us need each other. There has to be variety. There has to be this communal thing and so even if somebody like um, I deal a lot with with drop shippers and everything and even though I don't drop ship I do vintage once we get past the actual product uh, we're talking this we're still talking apples and apples they just happen to be a you know a granny smith and I'm a red delicious you know it just you know it, that's kind of how I see the Facebook platform, you know. But that's are you saying right. I'm a granny? <laughs> <laughs> Ab absolutely not. Oh, because I do have two. <laughs> that was that was Marcus. Know? I was referring to. Oh, that was me. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I actually really love our group. And it's interesting how, you know, because sometimes people will say, has anybody experienced this? And then they and they 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 put their vent on there. Um, you know, everybody is in a different emotional state when they're posting something online, whether it's frustrated or happy or sad or indifferent. Everybody is in a um, is in a different place in their life and so sometimes if i'm really upset i just stay off the board because i know that i might respond in a maybe agitated way or come across agitated and that's not how i want to be perceived uh, but you know we just have to be careful about how we how we how we try to communicate with people and and you know be i just uh, i just tried to post my script that i send to every single one of my customers i tried to post it in the chat apparently the chat has unlimited um characters that you can do but it it kind of hits on the notes that everybody uh that i got when i first started i'd get all these certain concerns and questions and this here the sending this uh that i send out has mitigated uh probably 75 percent of the concerns and questions that i get uh post post sale um one person it made angry i, I don't know how but it did <laughs> but uh I, I religiously send it to to every single order that comes through uh my messenger and it i, I think it, it really really helps i'll try to get that out there somehow for some reason it won't post the whole thing does anybody else have anything they'd like to add well i think that we can wrap up early yeah. oh go ahead alex 
Uh, one quick thing, um, in the spirit of culture building and understanding social norms for those that are here live or will watch this and you feel very strongly about the group that's being built, I know I'm uh, more and more sort of uh, blending myself in with everyone and enjoying the, the activity is to be a guardian of, of appropriate social norms. I think to echo what Lisa and Marcus have, have said and what is continuing to happen amongst the people because uh, a real thriving uh, social group is more than just the electronic side. There's real people behind the square boxes with real lives. And there's a certain etiquette, maybe a standard, if you will, um, not, not in the area of um, expectation where you'll be disappointed if you don't meet it, but, but a, certain, a certain standard, a certain etiquette that leans towards healthy and profitable business activity when you have certain like a core value of etiquette and standards you apply them even when your prospects pre or customers post sale don't follow the same ones on their side you maintain yours and there's something about a vibe and an energy and a consistency that raises your your self-image your confidence it it's it continues through in your commentary throughout the sales and you'll find like i have found especially in 2021 where people have said wow alex i've heard about your product man i'm excited to jump on board and and even in the community i try to really think twice speak once when i'm responding so that i think to myself and here's a quick tip if two and a half weeks from now or what have you i come back and i read my comment Will I scrunch my face like, oh man, <laughs> or will I be happy that it's a timeless response? Wow, what what an impact you can have if even for a fraction of a second, the comments that you respond, even when someone's ranting to empathize and to understand and then to follow up if you think is appropriate or with your prospects to look past, because I've had plenty of drunk people to look past their idiosyncrasies and their issues and trauma and just stick to the basics and show care you'll find that you'll you'll catch more bees with honey than with vinegar and that energy spreads because people who are influenced by you will follow and do their own thing in a healthy way therefore spreading this social etiquette because we are doing business we are in the public marketplace where you will be criticized you will be treated unfairly you will be judged it's a smaller perspective version of being a celebrity or a public figure. And if you didn't know that, now you know. And please maybe give that some thought and see if that's something you can vibe with. Because if you're looking just to sell off a few things, okay, cute. But if you're looking to do like Sean has mentioned and Lisa and Marcus and others to scale, then you want to seriously consider adopting some new healthy social norms or etiquette in this business as you're on your journey particularly in marketplace since meta wants to make this very social so that's my piece. Cool. perfect perfect i think what i'm going to that, um that's uh, where the second uh, profile comes in alex alex <laughs> that's where the second profile comes in if you want to roast somebody to the ground switch profiles go back handle <laughs> business and then switch back to now i'm getting it <laughs> right right your sneaky profile i got you sean right on <laughs> i will take one quote from you though alex and i think i might even have to like make a, a meme out of it a nice one it says think twice speak once that was pretty good marcus yeah. what did you have to say Speak twice, think once. Is that what he's? No. Oh. Think, <laughs> think twice, speak once. <laughs> God forbid we speak twice and think once. <laughs> uh, no, I think I had something, but uh, uh, I, I don't anymore. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. You thought once and it left. It didn't think twice. I, I only thought <laughs> once. <laughs> Well, let's wrap this day up. We're going to wrap up a little bit short today. Uh, I, I hope everyone has a really great holiday this year. Um, thank you so much for everything that you do. After Christmas, we will be back on track as far as, uh, you know, our Super Seller Sundays and all of our, you know, regular postings. If you guys need us, please feel free to contact us. That's what we're here for. And if you're watching this on the replay for YouTube, you want to come join our group. It's FB Marketplace for Sellers Only. 
thanks a bunch guys and thanks for joining us today bye